Greg DeGarian with Tempark Software, and I'm going to demonstrate how to create a rudimentary applicant tracking system using some of my favorite development tools. I'm going to start out with SQL Server, move to LLBL, then Exceeds Data Grid Control, and then finally Visual Studio to integrate it all. Uh, to start out, I write my SQL stuff using scripts in general, and to do that, I start out in the master database and I drop my database that I'm working with, I'll call it ATS, I'll recreate that database, and I'll use it, and I'll create a table in it called employee. And I like to have an identity column as my key or a GUID, I'll do an identity column here. If not null, I'll make that a primary key. And we'll go ahead and add a first name column, and a last name column. And a pay rate. We'll make that a money field, not null, and a default of zero. There we go. And I happen to have some sample data sitting around. I'm going to go ahead and grab that if you don't mind. Control C. I'll paste that as insert statements here. And then at the bottom of all this, I'll just see if my uh, script is working. And it is. I see that I have inserted the data there. So now I have my data table set. Now I can go over to LLBL. I'll go ahead and launch that. Basically, LLBL takes a SQL uh, table object and turns it into C sharp objects. And create a new project. I'll call it ATS6. Greg and SQL driver server name. This is my SQL server instance. And I'm going to connect. I'm going to use that ATS database. And now we're going to build up the um, LLBL database here. And I can add the entities that it found in my SQL database, which of course include that employee payroll. So that's added. Now I'm ready to go ahead and generate my code. I'm going to do it in C Sharp and .NET 2.0. I'm going to have a root namespace of ATS, and we'll use a self-servicing template group. It's basically the simplest one they got. And now we're ready to generate our code. And so now LBL does all this work of generating my C-sharp classes for me. And we're done there. And now I'm ready to go ahead and launch uh, SQL, um, sorry, Visual Studio. We'll go ahead and create a new project. It's going to be a .NET 3.0 Windows application file. It could be a uh, XBAP should be interesting too, or even a, uh, well, we'll just stick with that. Let's go with Windows Presentation Framework. I'm going to move my solution window over so you can see some of the manipulation I'm having to do there. But basically what I'm going to do is uh, add to this project my uh, LLBL project that we just generated, and finally add some references to the um, LLBL DLL and the Exceed DLL. So go over here to File. I'm going to add a new existing project. Well, it's the project we just created. And so I'm going to go to My Documents, LLBL, and finally, um, uh, well, what did I call this thing in LLBL? You know, sometimes I have to go back here and, and rethink this. Uh, I dropped it right into LLBL Gen Pro Project. I'm actually going to drop it into ATS6 because I want to make sure that I'm not getting confused. So I'm regenerating my C-sharp objects, just making sure that I'm going to be using the right project here. And we'll uh, don't need it. Go back and add existing projects. And go to my documents, LBL, ATS6, and there's my ATS project. So I'm going to add that. I'm also going to need to add references to the LLBL DLLs. And those are pretty easy to find. And I'm also going to grab the exceed ones for WPF. So I'm going to go to exceed and then uh, data grid for WPF. And then data control for WPF. And I need to hold down the control key to select those all. So go back to my LLBL and make sure I got that. And say OK. Now I have my references. I also need an app config file over here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this data that LLBL generated for me and go ahead and create a new um, 
sorry, a new a new pro a new item here. It's going to be a uh, application configuration file like that. And I'm going to go there and copy paste in my connection string. And then finally, save it. I'm going to rename it. Just for whatever reason, it needs it to be named properly. And now I'm ready to go in and start doing some C-sharp coding. I'm going to need to have references to my ATS uh, classes. So I have ATS dot, um, uh, let's see, what was my namespace again? Oh, it's easy to find out. I just go in here, and you see it's ATS collection classes. So I should be able to go over here and say ATS dot collection classes, but it's not letting me do that because why? Oh, I have to add a reference also to my project, my uh, data access project. I'm going to come over here, say collection classes. And now I'll create a few um, objects here that are going to help me get this done. I'm going to do the, um, oops, I didn't do my exceed controls either. Sorry, that is our namespaces. Exceed WPF, and I'm using seed wpf dot controls using exceed dot wpf dot data grid there we go um, I got to uh, create that data grid control and I'm also gonna go ahead and create my collection for the employee. So it's going to be employee collection. I'll call that EC, and I want to get a new employee collection. Now, one thing I'm going to sneak in on you, I didn't want to like kind of do anything on the outside, but I got this big hairy key from Exceed for their uh, licensing. This is a free product that they offer, the compiled version of their product. And they just make you stick in the license key like that. So there we go. Um, create some space here for myself. Now, at this point, I want to make the content of my window, uh, Windows Presentation Framework application be the Exceed Data Grid. So I'm just going to simply say content equals uh, my Data Grid control. And I also want to set the item source of the data grid from Exceed to be the employee collection that I've created. Well, um, actually what I need to do first is get uh, some rows back from my collection. So I'm going to say get multi here. It's basically going to pull in some data, and I need to give it a null argument there. But now I can say EC. Now, I probably have a few mistakes in here, but it's not too hard to to try and retry this. So I'll just press F5 and see if I got it right the first time. Seems to have compiled OK. And look at that. In no time at all, I have an N-tier applicant tracking system. I can go in and modify columns and so forth. And it's built on an N-tier architecture using SQL Server, uh, Object Relation Mapper from LLBL, and a data grid from Exceed. And that ends my clip here. Thank you very much.